One of the most advanced space maneuvers ever just happened, quietly and without public fanfare. China has reportedly completed the first satellite refueling operation in geostationary orbit, 36,000 kilometers above Earth. This wasn't a test on paper. It was a real satellite-to-satellite -satellite fuel transfer, extending the mission of an aging satellite by eight years. In this video, we break down exactly how this was done, why it matters, and what it means for the future of space sustainability and orbital technology. In early June 2025, a quiet but potentially historic event took place far above Earth, one that may have just changed how satellites are operated for decades to come. Two Chinese satellites, Shijian-21 and Shijian-25, were spotted performing a synchronized maneuver in geostationary orbit, GEO, approximately 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. This orbit is critical. It's where satellites stay fixed over a single point on Earth, making it essential for weather forecasting, global communications, and time-sensitive space-based services. The movements of SJ-21 and SJ-25 were not random. According to tracking data from Comspoc, a commercial space situational awareness firm, the two satellites gradually approached each other beginning June 9th, reducing their longitudinal separation to within just two degrees, a signal that some form of interaction was likely imminent. Observers suspected the satellites were preparing for a refueling test, something that has been theorized in space engineering for years but rarely, if ever, executed in geostationary orbit. On June 11th, multiple indicators, including orbital position logs and proximity data, suggested that the two satellites successfully docked. Reports from Slingshot Aerospace and comments cited by Breaking Defense confirmed that analysts had been observing SJ-25 as a potential servicing satellite. Launched in January 2025, SJ-25 had been described publicly by Chinese authorities as a vehicle designed for in-orbit refueling demonstrations. The suspected result? A successful transfer of approximately 313 pounds, 142 kilograms, of hydrazine fuel from SJ-25 to SJ-21. Hydrazine is a hypergolic propellant commonly used in satellite maneuvering systems. This transfer is believed to have extended SJ-21's operational lifespan by an estimated eight years, an enormous achievement when most satellites are retired or deorbited once their fuel runs out. What makes this more impressive is the history of SJ-21. In 2022, this satellite captured attention by towing a defunct bay to navigation satellite, Beidou 2G2, into a higher graveyard orbit reserved for decommissioned satellites. The operation showcased complex orbital handling capabilities, essentially satellite-to-satellite -satellite docking, which is rare at such distances from Earth. Satellite refueling in orbit may sound like a minor milestone to the casual observer, but in practice, it represents a fundamental shift in how we think about operating technology in space. Today, most satellites are launched with a fixed supply of fuel. Once that runs out, no matter how well the hardware is functioning, the mission is essentially over. This constraint has shaped the way satellites are built, launched, and retired, until now. The recent demonstration between SJ-25 and SJ-21 suggests that this limitation is no longer absolute. A satellite that can receive fuel in orbit, especially in geostationary orbit, gains a powerful new advantage, longevity. In SJ-21's case, analysts estimate that the satellite's mission has been extended by up to eight additional years, simply by transferring 142 kilograms of hydrazine. This is not just impressive, it's transformative. Think of all the expensive, highly calibrated satellites in GEO that are designed for tasks like weather observation, satellite-based internet, global communication, and Earth monitoring. For many of them, fuel is the bottleneck. Extending mission duration by years without sending new rockets, building new satellites, or dealing with launch delays offers enormous operational and financial value. It also helps reduce space debris by keeping satellites useful instead of abandoned. Beyond cost savings, refueling adds a new level of flexibility. Satellites that once had to conserve fuel for precise maneuvers can now operate more aggressively, adjusting their orientation or positioning more frequently to maximize mission effectiveness. They can also be repositioned more readily to respond to changing priorities, 
whether commercial, scientific, or national infrastructure-based. From a technological standpoint, it's worth noting that performing a fuel transfer in GEO is no small feat. At such altitudes, even the smallest miscalculation in orbital velocity can result in large divergences over time. Synchronizing two satellites for docking, aligning fuel ports, and successfully completing a transfer without leaking or destabilizing the orbit requires high-precision navigation, robust software control, and redundant safety systems. China demonstrated through the SJ-21 and SJ-25 satellites is more than a single technical win. It's a glimpse into the future of space infrastructure. A future where satellites are not disposable, but serviceable. Where long-term operations are sustained through orbital logistics. And where refueling becomes part of a broader toolkit that includes maintenance, upgrades, and relocation of critical space assets. This isn't happening in isolation. Over the past decade, China has invested heavily in building a comprehensive space ecosystem. Satellites, launch vehicles, space stations, lunar landers, and now in orbit servicing. Each new capability feeds into the next. The SJ-25 refueling demonstration, for instance, builds directly on earlier experiments with satellite docking and towing, like SJ-21's 2022 mission to tow the defunct Beidou 2G2 to a higher graveyard orbit. What's emerging is a space program that focuses not just on deploying systems, but on sustaining and optimizing them once deployed. This approach marks a significant shift in how we think about orbital infrastructure. No longer is it a fire-and-forget endeavor. Instead, space is becoming a managed environment, one that evolves in real time and adapts to long-term needs. We're also seeing a growing emphasis on non-destructive satellite interaction. Unlike the earlier days of space flight, where touching another satellite was risky and rare, the tools now available, robotic arms, docking systems, fuel transfer ports, make direct interaction more feasible. These capabilities open the door to even more advanced services, component replacement, orbital cleaning, and possibly satellite upgrades. The SJ-25 test suggests China may already be laying the foundation for such a system. Its success gives confidence in a future where satellite clusters work together as part of a modular, sustainable ecosystem rather than as isolated, expendable platforms. That could have ripple effects across the entire space industry. Crucially, this evolution also encourages the development of better space traffic management systems. As more satellites become serviceable and maneuverable, tracking their behavior and predicting their movements becomes more complex. But that complexity also brings stability because a well-maintained, refueled satellite is less likely to malfunction, drift, or contribute to space debris. This wasn't just a technical test. It was a pivotal moment in the evolution of space operations. By quietly refueling a satellite in geostationary orbit, China has introduced a powerful new capability. The ability to extend missions, reduce costs, and make satellite infrastructure more sustainable. It's a shift from simply launching satellites to maintaining, and upgrading them in space. As global interest in orbital logistics grows, this achievement may be remembered as the starting point of a new chapter, one where keeping satellites active for the long haul becomes just as important as getting them there in the first place. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching and see you next time.